Hello and welcome to the Office of the State Engineers Tutorials. This tutorial will cover how to search the online map application called the OSE Pod Locations Map. It is accessible from the OSE website. The term pods is an acronym that stands for points of diversion. This is including diversion of both surface and groundwater. You may need to find past permits or well logs for your well, the reported depth to water, download well data to use on your computer, or you might want to make and print a map. First, let's go to the OSE website, which is is ose.state.nm.us. On the home page, you can access online services. By clicking on the link, you can then go to the site that allows you to download the spatial data for use on your own computer, or you can access the online mapping programs, which is including the OSE pod locations map. You can access the online map application and you can select the picture of the windmill on the front. And this is the OSE pod locations map. Once you're inside the map, you're gonna be asked to accept the limitations of the data by clicking the box and then clicking OK. On this page, you can also access a link to the OSE database, which we call NIMWRS, which is the New Mexico Water Rights Reporting System. And on this page, it also gives you a link that will also take you back to the map. The OSE pod locations map reflects the pod location information as it's recorded in the public documents found in the OSE water right files. Many of them have not been ground truthed. Data has been collected since 1905 by paperwork filed in the office, such as declarations filed by water right owners, permits, and orders from adjudications. Statute requires that a well be described by quarter-quarter section or within 40 acres, which means many wells have the same location on the paperwork. Until 1990, well locations were manually projected using USGS topo maps. Later, we had computer-aided mapping tools to help us determine locations, so keep this in mind when you're looking up older data. It was not until 2005 that rules were enacted requiring that the well driller provide a GPS location of the drilled well, and policies were enacted that now require permittees to provide a coordinate instead of a 40-acre description, which makes more recent data more reliable. Not all of the state's water right files have been entered into the database, so please check the map showing the areas that are complete before you begin your search. In 2005, the OSE converted all of the data in the database to a common coordinate system, which is UTM meters, that would then allow us to view the pod data in a map. The wells that were identified by quarter quarter section, quarter section, or by section were put into the center of the description given. Once we plotted them on the earth, some of the projected locations were unable to plot. That was because either there were digits in the coordinate that were missing on the paper or the locations on some wells were projected into land grants. Land grants were granted to both individuals and communities during the Spanish and Mexican periods of New Mexico history, and land grants were not part of the lands that were surveyed for public domain. Permits that had PLSS locations but were in land grants were not able to be converted. We are collecting corrected well data when the public can provide us with a coordinate to make that data more precise. There are three pod layers in the map. The first one is the GIS Waters Pods. This shows you all pod locations that fall within the state boundary, but this is only updated monthly. The second one is recently edited pods. Those are pod locations that have either been created or edited within the last month. The next one is the cluster layer of GIS pods. This one shows those wells that are described by the same quarter of a section, and it will map a number in a bubble showing how many wells are stacked up upon one another at that location. There are ways to search for the wells by owner name, groundwater basin, county, lat long, OSE water right file number, public land surveying system, X and Y state plane, or by a street address. No matter how you arrive at a point, you you will see all of the pod locations displayed on the map as a point. There are some great tools here, so let's get started. I will also show you how to click on the pod to view the well information and get access to the scan documents if they are available. There are tools in the red ribbon on the left of the map, and then there is an address bar here. 
and then there are widgets to the left and underneath the address box and I will walk you through how to use each of them. The first and most familiar to you should be the address bar or the place bar. This will allow you to enter in either an OSE pod number, a physical address, the name of a land grant, the name of a ditch or an acequia, and when you click on the looking glass it will zoom in on that area or it will give you a selection of multiple similar places to zoom to. If you type in the address and you can hit either the enter button or click on the looking glass, it zooms in to that area of interest and so you need to make sure that all of the pod layers are turned on and closing that window you can see here that there is only a few wells that appear in the neighborhood and so I'm going to click on this one of interest and so this well was drilled in 2003 to a depth of 73 feet and it estimated yield of 30 gallons a minute and it tells the size of the casing which is 5 inches. It gives a little bit more information the file number the sub basin number who owns the well and the address and then you click on more info and it will take you to the imaged documents in Nimworse and you can either get the image list here or you can click on the icon that says get images. The top one is the event which is in this column here it says APP which stands for application and the bottom one is the LOG which is the well log. This is the most important information when it comes to your well it tells how it's been constructed and how deep it is and also who drilled the well. That is how you access the documents. The pod that you are looking for may not be exactly where the map takes you to as the pod location may be more vague than where the address takes you to. Remember the earlier discussion regarding the disparity of the pod locations and if you do not see anything that looks familiar to you, you may have to search the database for names of the previous owners. Now let's go over the tools and widgets. To the left of the address bar is a zoom in and a zoom out button but if you want to go back to the full state location click the button that looks like a house and it will take you to the default extent and that brings you out to the full state view. The button below that will zoom in on your location. The first widget that's located below the address bar with an XYZ dimensional glyph allows you to search by coordinates either latitude and longitude, state plane, UTM meters, or in the public land surveying system. You can change both the input coordinates and the output coordinates by clicking on the tab. You can set the input coordinates and then again down in the output coordinates you can do the same. Put it in in section township and range and have it come out in latitude longitude. It will convert between the two coordinates. You can also click on a spot in the map to discover the coordinates at that location by clicking on map input. Click on the button that says map and click on a location. It gives you the X and the Y of that location that you clicked on. The second widget that's located below the address bar is the location icon with three legs and it allows you to search the waters database by the following information. You can search by the OSE pod number if you already have that information. You put in the basin and then a number and then the suffix and the second way that you can search by owner name. Partial names work in that search as well or you can draw a rectangle on the map or a polygon on the map and it will give you the list of wells within that, that location such as this or it can hover over the pod number and it will give you the owner of record name that may not be the person who owns it today but it is the person of record in the database. You can export the return pods into an Excel spreadsheet and this gives you the depth of well, the depth to water and this is good information if you're wanting to compare depths to water on wells in a certain area. Also when you are 
searching for by a pod number, you can put in RG111 will return any RG with 111 in any of the combination of the five numbers. The third widget that is located below the address bar, it looks like a location marker with three points surrounded by a circle. This is a buffer tool. This allows you to select a point on the map and then it will draw a circle around that location based upon your parameter of your buffer and it will return to you a list of all the wells that are within that location. We'll click on that one well that we were just looking at and it's going to put a circle 500 meters because that's the unit of measure that I have set here. You can change that between feet, kilometers, miles, yards and change the distance and it gives you all of the wells within that area and then again you can download that in an Excel spreadsheet. The fourth widget below the address bar is shaped like a document with a plus sign on top and it allows you to add data. You can either temporarily connect with other Esri services which allows you to temporarily add their data to our map but once you close that window the connection to that other service will be disconnected and that's how you connect to another service's data. This allows you to compare our data with their data. You can also add other URLs that will add other data sources in the same fashion. If you know the location of that information, you can add the URL to that source data right there. You can do that with county parcel data, for instance. And also in the last column, this allows you to upload shape files and KML files and other data. The fifth widget that is below the address bar is the print function which everybody should be familiar with. It will output a printed copy of the map view. You can change the title to the map. You can change the layout. You can also change the format if you wanted to put a copy of a map into a report for example. Let's move to the tools to the red ribbon on the side of your map. And I've already been in some of them, but I haven't explained them yet. The top widget is four squares that allows you to toggle through all the different base maps that are available for this map. You right now are viewing aerial imagery. Here's a topographic map. Here's a street map or any number of maps. Of the second widget down that looks like a triangle square in a circle with lines to the right is the map legend. Whichever layers that you have turned on to view will have a corresponding header in the legend and an icon to explain how the layer will be displayed and interpreted. The third widget, which looks like three pieces of paper stacked upon one another, is the layer list. When you open this, you'll see a plethora of information that you can toggle on and off depending on what you're looking for. Many of these layers are self-explanatory, but I will explain the ones that need explaining. I've already gone through the three pod layers at the beginning of the video, the cluster layer, your recently edited layer, and your GIS pods layer. You must have all three turned on to make sure that you're going to find the pod that you're looking for in case it's been edited recently. The OSE district office locations are shown by a red star. You can see a star here, a star behind the word Farmington, there's one here behind the word Albuquerque, one in Las Cruces, one in Roswell and the other in Deming. The water right regulation areas are extremely important. Critical management areas, the ones with guidelines, have been created by the state engineer to allow for orderly development of water rights in that area. Quality restriction areas have been identified by the New Mexico Environment Department or by the Environmental Protection Agency as areas of contamination where drilling is either restricted or forbidden. Local ordinance areas are areas that reflect where the laws have been created by local government to restrict or limit drilling of new wells that may compete against a public water supply. Special condition areas include areas that have court judgments restricting water use. And lastly, we have negative easement areas, and those are areas where deed restrictions are in place where the water rights have been leased, purchased, or sometimes permanently retired to help meet interstate compact requirements. The fourth widget down on the left-hand side is a measurement tool. You can measure distances or areas and change the units of measure accordingly. This measures areas. You can change it between square yards, feet, 
etc. This allows you to measure miles by miles, kilometers, feet, meters, or yards. It'll give you the locations, the information. The fifth widget has many tools inside. The first panel of tools allows you to annotate on your map. You can add a point, you can add a line, polygons, shapes, or text to a map for emphasis. The next one is the filter tool. The first function of this tool allows you to select each of the water regulation areas and see them one at a time separately. And I'll show you how that works. If you just want to see the critical management areas, you would click that button on. And these critical management areas, again, are the ones that have guidelines. And if you want to see the guidelines or the orders that related, they're in as a attachments. So there's metering information and website information for this one. This actually gives you the documents and so does this one. If you just want areas of special condition areas, which would be the Nambi Pawaki Tosuke area or the Gila San Francisco area, you can view the related documents issued by the court here or a link to the rules and regulations regarding administration of water rights in that area. Quality restriction areas such as this one and it gives you a health advisory and in this other document gives the order where it prohibits wells being drilled and there's next you have local ordinances and you can view the documents within there or copies of the ordinance and then the, again the negative easement areas and if you want more advanced filtering tools you would select the layer that you want to query on and you select your field here and then you can do your query by building an expression. The next tool is the share tool. It allows you to share links of this map application to an email or social media. It also provides code to you to embed our map into another website. Below that is a survey for Asekia names. If you notice that an Asekia name needs to be updated, you can select that tool to access a survey form that'll allow you to fix that name data. The county assessor's websites are linked here if they have have a website available and is the distance and direction button. This allows you to measure distance and bearing between two points and or shapes. And this concludes our tutorial on how to use the OSE pod locations map. Be sure and check out the other tutorials on our page. Thank you for your time and attention. Please click the subscribe button below and hit the bell for notifications when new videos are uploaded to our page. Thanks and have a great day.